Okay, hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Um, we're on part three of the trial. Hopefully there won't be too many more parts. Hopefully the clues and the stuff won't be as aggravating to get as that stupid, oh, third bullet one. Ah, Gina. How are you holding up? I'm starting to feel quite warmly towards her frequent cold shoulders now. Why'd you feel warm? Jenny! Are you alright? Why aren't you saying anything? I am so tired. What's the point, eh? Why go to all this trouble and fight so hard for the likes of me? What? Well, you saw it. That picture. What picture? Ah, you mean this? The photograph taken by Holy's red-handed recorder? Well, I didn't think it would have captured a scene like this, that's for sure. It's hopeless. Anyone who sees that's gonna think I did it, ain't they? Well, I won't pretend it wasn't a bit of a shock when the prosecution first presented it to the court. Surely you gotta have your doubts about me now. You can't still think I'm innocent. Of course I can. <laughs> Ginny, why don't you talk to us? Tell us what really happened that night. Yeah, you, she could have talked to us the whole time and we're just like, well, we'll prove your innocence without hearing your side of the story at all. Like, uh. Runus cleverly managed to piece together a lot of new information, but still. We'd really like to hear it from you. All right, then. Yes, within this hour, you have to tell me your whole story. It was after we had that dinner at your place, right, Iris? Then we all had a chat up in your office, didn't we? Yes, I remember. After that, I just couldn't get to sleep. So I slipped out and went down to the street to the to-do one, to Winterbank's place. I had to know. If Iris's, if Iris's story was there or not, the Hamden of the Baskervilles? I don't know what's up, what it's about or nothing. But if you ask me, there's something in that Sholmes that, um, don't like. There's something in it that Sholmes don't like. Something what you don't want people reading. So that's why you lied to Iris about sticking in love with Windebank for safekeeping. But wasn't it in Windebanks? At least that's what I thought at the time. Oh yeah, that's what she thought. And it was there. So you broke into Windebanks. I just had to know if it was there or not. I mean, I had no idea all of that was going to kick off, did I? Shouldn't have broken in that night. <laughs> I struck the lock and stuck aside. It was dark as you like in there. So I gave the oil lamp on the counter a bit of wick, and that's when. What do you think you're doing? Ah! I didn't even die, I did. The next thing I knew. Grabbed the gun off the counter and was waving in the air like I don't know what. Oh, you're the girl who was in here this afternoon. I didn't think Pop Pockets were there for armed robbery. The, the mantle skirt. I got it here. Your Tom said leave a load of papers with you. A story. I beg your pardon? I don't remember his voice, he's been dead for a long time. The hound of the something or other. If it's here, I want to see it. I'm sorry, young lady. But I'd sooner die than relinquish an article belonging to one of my customers. I don't want it. What would I do with it anyway? I just want to see if it's here, that's all. Oh, you want to see it, do you? I don't know if Sean's really pawned here or not. Please, just let me see it and I'll go. 
Oh, very well then. Well, for pity's sake, stop waving my gun around, would you? That's why she was in the storeroom. So then the alcove unlocked the storeroom door and we both went inside. And it was there, all right. The mantle screw. Shells weren't lying after all. You did all that just to check for me, Jenny. Anyway, then there was a bit of a kick up out in the main bit of the shop. Hey, Miss Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. I'm so tired for a Tuesday. I'm so sleepy. The Skulkin brothers are arriving on the scene, yes. What was that noise? Someone's breaking in. Dear me, is there some burglars convention here tonight that I don't know about? I think I forgot to shut the door behind me. Sorry. I better go and take care of it. Could I possibly have my gun back? Oh, well, I come with you and... Now don't be foolish, young girl. Must stay right here. Don't leave this room under any circumstances. And with that, he took the gun out of my hands and walked back into the shop. I went back in the storm, like you said, trained me ears in the dark to hear what's going on. It sounded like they got into a bit of a scrap. I started to think I should help, see? So I was just about to go out to the storm door myself when. Bang bang! I had a couple of shots go off. Two, I think. Almost at the same time. And then there it was, right at my feet. Lying face down on the floor. I was right next to the storm door, so I slammed it shut and locked it quick as, quick as you like. Because you thought whoever had shot Mr. Windbank might come for you. Yeah, so I want to grab the old coast gun. I figured I'd put up a fight at least. But when I got a better look at him, I knew. Windbank was a goner. I felt funny in my head all of a sudden. Kind of dizzy. And after that, I don't remember nothing. That must be when you passed out, Gina. If if I hadn't done what I'd done, the old cove might still be alive. Gina just brings disaster wherever she goes, it's kinda sad. Did you tell the police everything you just told us? Of course I did, but they didn't believe a word of it, did they? Pretty toast. Hey Kirby, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. How's your island come along on? Have you been playing Animal Crossing? I've done so much redesigning, but I still have so much left to do. That's a lot of work. All they said was, if I kept telling lies, it'd make things even worse for me. It'll be alright, Jenny. Don't worry. Just stay strong a little longer. Runa's about to put the real culprit through the mill. That cool what was there in the afternoon? That Edgar Benedict. I still remember how he looked at me, like I was nothing. Oh, that's creepy. He... it was there that night. We don't know his real name yet. But I'm convinced that he's involved somehow. Anyway, thank you for telling us what happened, Gina. I appreciate your honesty. What? You can leave it all in Runo's capable hands now, Ginny. Mr. Nara Odo. <laughs> yes? How come you trust me? I don't get it. I don't get it either. <laughs> I mean, have you forgotten what happened here before? Come on, it was only two months ago. 
Me and Mr. Me and McGildan, we told you a whole pack of lies. And you got the bog trotter off of him. Wait, what? You got the bog, yeah, bog trotter off of him, even though he was a killer. No, I could never forget that. Oh. I did what I thought was best at the time. But the pain of that era of judgment doesn't get any easier to bear. Still, don't forget that I also made you a promise. Oh, that's a lot of cats, Kirby. What the heck? <laughs> I told you that I'd be on your side to the bitter end no matter what. That the color of the cat makes it look like a mess a like a um a, what you would call it? A weird human face that's been somehow like distorted. It's kinda creepy. <laughs> well off I'm lying. It could be worth it to get another kill off the look hook for all you know. I was once in your position, Gina. I was the accused in the trial. You what? Before I left Japan, I was accused of murder. And strange as it might sound, the circumstances of the crime were pretty damning. I was sure that no one would believe it wasn't me who'd done it. Oh, Bruno. But there was one person who stood up for me, who believed in me, and was prepared to defend me. My best friend. Asuki! Do you know, Skin? No one believes in you more than I do. Leave this to me. All you need to do is put your faith in me, and I'll do the rest. <sighs> I was so happy I cried. <laughs> but even then. Jelly Fangirl, heck yes, it's been so long since we saw his face. Now turn to look at the camera. Turn to look at us. Somewhere inside me, I couldn't help thinking. Surely he doesn't really believe in me. Not completely. <gasps> he turned! But I was wrong. He turned and shined his beautiful face upon me. As soon as my trial began, it was obvious. That he had an absolute unwavering belief in me. And in turn, I developed an absolute unwavering belief in him. Absolute unwavering. <laughs> the face. Yes, exactly. Since then, I came to realize an absolute unwavering crush on him. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. I have a huge crush on him. If you want someone to believe in you, you have to believe in the other person first. What are you saying? I promise you, Gina, that no matter what happens, I'll keep believing in you. So you don't need to worry. I won't let you down. Even though I'm a diver and a no good liar. You're not like McGilded. I know that. Eh? That's right, you're a friend, Ginny. Uh, Iris. We know you better than you think. You're a tsundere. And we've come to the conclusion that you're someone we can trust. Yes. That's really all we need to know. Exactly. Um... Mr. Nara Odo, I, um, I... <laughs> Defendant Tina Lestrade and her legal representative. Court proceedings are about to resume. Please head into the courtroom immediately. Yes, of course. Thank you. I'm wondering, since since Sholmes is here, Watson is like kind of here, I wonder if in the second game, our ultimate enemy is going to be Moriarty. 
for some reason, I think a couple episodes ago, when Gina first came out, I was like, oh, Lestrade, that's the name of his arch nemesis. It's not. It's Moriarty. Hmm. His theme song. Uh, I love it. It's my phone alarm to wake up in the morning. Hmm. I've been both a defendant and a defending lawyer in my time. So I knew only too well just how hard it was to put all your faith in another. And I also knew just how hard it was to bear the burden of another putting all their faith in you. Isn't this like a nice relaxing song to like wake up to? It isn't too like jarring. It isn't too like energetic. It's kind of like a nice like yeah, this is like such a nice way to wake up. I've never woken up cranky ever since I changed my alarm to this. This is it at last, the final chapter, the final battle. <gasps> so this is the last part? No way, no way. This is wishful thinking, man. Wish me luck, Susan Tassan, and I hope you're watching over me too. I don't think this is the, um, the final part. I really hope it is though. But if it is, then that means that this is gonna be super long. Mm, Kirby, do you want Raymond on your island? Because if you do, I got you a hookup. I got Raymond's amiibo card. <laughs> I hereby call this court to order as we resume the trial of Miss Gina Lestrade. My empty spot got taken. Oh, um, who'd you fill it up with? Next time I get an empty spot, I'll ask. That's if you want him. Like, I'm... I'm willing to time travel to Brit call Raymond over. If there's anyone in new series 5 amiibo cards you want, let me know. <coughs> Sorry, Eminem. I'll eventually want everyone if I'm still playing. Haha, <laughs> okay. Mia Faye is cuter. Um, Mia's the older sister, right? Yeah, Mia's definitely cuter. Maya was kind of annoying. <laughs> Lord Von Zeeks, have you successfully subpoenaed the witness? The subpoena was delivered to the communication station where the man works immediately, my lord. However, the heavy rain has delayed the arrival of his carriage, it would seem. Hmm. I see. Then let us turn our attention to Inspector Gregson's pr presses of the case, heard by the court this morning. Presses? Presses? The glaring omission of the third bullet in your report is a serious blunder, Inspector. Yes, um, I can only apologize, my lord. And although the defense's chemical analysis of the blood at the scene makes for a compelling argument, I cannot permit such untried methods to be used as evidence in my courtroom. Hm. It's a big mistake to cross Hurley and me. A very big mistake. Yo, Regal, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Tuesday! Uh, May had a healthy appetite. She was also, like, too ditzy. Like, when she first came out, I was like, oh, she's cute because you're defending her and all that, but then once she really started to, like, be part of your, um, your law office, I was just like, man, you're annoying. They recently updated Terraria, and I love it. That's good. Did you see that the Final Fantasy XIV um, Endwalker release date is delayed for like three weeks? Lord! The subpoena witness has just arrived in the building. Thank you, officer. Show him to the stand without delay. Mr. Edgar Benedict. I didn't expect to be crossing paths with him again so soon. And certainly not like this. Did I see it? <laughs> it's been non-stop in my timeline. <laughs> Thank you for complying with the court subpoena at short such short notice, sir. But of course, my lords, as an upstanding member of London society, it is my pleasure to oblige. I gotta make him sound hoity-toity. Now, kindly state your name and occupation for the record. Ashley Graydon, communications officer. Mr. Graydon and I both work at London Central Communication Station. Now perhaps somebody would kindly explain what all this is about. 
You were apprised of the situation by the court officer on your way here, I presume. Oh yeah, I saw that Vieras are getting um new haircuts, but then when I looked at them, I was like, eh, the hairstyle I have right now is the cutest. But then all the, um, I guess, endgame gear is made to look like Final Fantasy IV, since in Final Fantasy IV they do go to the moon. So I'm just like, oh snap, that's cool. And I looked at Bard, and it looks like um, Ed... Wow, what's his name? Oh, I forgot the Bard's name. I remember everyone else's name except the Bard. But after I get that outfit, I could be the Spoony Bard. What was his name? Was it Edmund? No, I don't think it was Edmund. Moony Toast, hee <laughs> hee Heck yeah, in Final Fantasy XIV we're going to the moon! Yes, it was. Something to do with a murder that took place at Pornbrokers on Baker Street. And some nonsense about me having been there on the night in question. That is the accusation indeed. This is really beyond a joke, you know. Very well, without further delay, the court will hear your testimony now, Mr. Graydon. You will respond to the accusation made against you by under oath. But he, he didn't even tell his real name under oath. Gladly, my lord, gladly. What the freak was that? The accusation. Naturally, I have occasion to make use of pawnbroking services from time to time. Pawnbroking, whoops. But are you seriously suggesting I colluded with these thugs to break into the place on night of the murder? I have no intention of admitting to such an outrageous accusation. Even if certain parties here present, present claim that my blood was found at the scene. Some scaramouche defective homebrew tincture can hardly be taken as serious evidence. So, you deny the accusation completely, do you? I must say, I am dismayed. For the highest court in the land to be swayed by the self-professed detective's toy. It was the will of the jury, and our great British justice system demands that the jury's will is upheld. Then it would seem that we have the same misfortune of a most inept assembly of jurors today. By golly! How long am I expected to be detained here? If, following the defense's cross-examination, your involvement in this matter has not been established. You will be free to leave immediately. Good, then I shall be away in time for afternoon tea. Some small consolation, at least. Let us not hold up Mr. Graydon any longer than necessary, Counsel. Proceed with the cross-examination. So, we meet again, Mr. Eggert Benedict. Or is it Mr. Graydon? Or is it Mr. Sulky Skulkin? My apologies. You are... Yurosuke Naruhoro, defense lawyer. We have met. If you say so. Ashley Graydon, enchanté. So... Ew. I don't want your hat. I trust we can conclude this quickly. That's what she said? <laughs> Ugh. But I'm not holding your flashy what hat while we do. Throw it on the ground. Who cares? The accusation. Naturally, blah, 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 blah. Yes, we even met in the very prom brokery where the crime took place on the afternoon of the day in question. That was very wordy. Though, of course, you introduced yourself by a different name at the time. Hmm. It was Mr. Eckert Benedict, I believe. Tell me, what made you- Shut up. Let me question him. The witness is here to testify about events that took place that night. He 
He is under no obligation to answer such unrelated questions. Shut up. It could be related, you idiot. You can't be serious. Thank you, because I certainly do not feel inclined to answer such an inappropriate question. Well, if you really were a gentleman that, like, made use of pawnbrokeries, like, legitly, like, in a legit way, why would you need a false name? Unless you were shady, you dumb idiot. So he's going to be evasive, is he? In an effort to not give anything away. This could be tricky. I will expose you for the scrub you are. Are you seriously suggesting I could lose with these dogs? Have you seen these two men before? He could clearly lie! This pair? No, I don't associate with criminals. But that is important. It's just... It's what the game wills. That bad man who introduced himself as Edgar Benedict. I'd like to know who I have to thank for this. Who made this outlandish accusation against me? The young lawyer there in the black. This is false. Whose idea was it to permit an outsider to work in a British court anyway? Well, needless to say. I have no intention of blah, 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 blah. Where were you at around one in the morning on the night in question, sir? Asleep in my bed. That is past the hour at which I normally retire. Exactly. Certainly. I was not in the company of these rapscallions. You're able to prove that? Why is that an objection? That is a legit question. Does he have an alibi? Do can he corroborate? Like, oh my. Listen carefully, my Nipponese friend. For you appear to be under a gross misapprehension on this point. What do you mean? The witness maintains he was not at the scene of the crime. He has no obligation to prove his absence. Yes, he does, because we called him in here as a witness. This is infuriating. That's not how it works. This, this is just purely infuriating. If your accusation is that the witness was present at the scene, the obligation lies with you to prove your assertion. But we can still ask for, like, Hey, wouldn't it be better for Van Zeeks anyway if if um, Graydon was like, oh yeah, sure, like my butler saw me or like my my landlord saw me, like then then we don't have to go about this roundabout nonsense. Oh my gosh, the prosecution is right. No, you will fulfill that obligation before putting any more unreasonable questions to witness. Hey look, it's that dance that looks very similar to the Skulkin Brothers. A silent victory wiggle, thanks. Is there any very Blood was found at the scene of the crime. There's no question of that. Hey, take off your clothes and see if we can find a gunshot wound. Mr. Sholmes' chemical analysis has positively identified the substance as such. Vanzi seems to be like, no, we're not accepting that as evidence, blah, you stupid Nipponese man. But I'm not the only human to have blood running through my veins, am I? How can you be sure that the blood is mine? It could equally be the blood of one of these two miscreants. Every individual's blood has a slightly different composition, it seems. Mr. Sholmes' chemical is able to differentiate between blood samples by spare the science lesson. Who's this Sholmes character anyway? Oh, I, I assumed all Londoners would know the name. He's a great, well, a renowned detective. So, even you are unable to bring yourself to say great detective. 
secret detective, you say? <laughs> now we're in the realm of fairy tales, are we? Hi. Um, what's pursue? Pursue. Do you have something to say about that, Mr. Skulkin? Eh, what? Well, me? No, the Mr. Skulkin next to you. Right, I've had a lot to hear with this. How many times have I got to tell you? Yes, I know. You're not Big Bruff Sulky. Since the witness is not under suspicion, there's no evidence of his involvement, then you have to take what he says as true unless he is contradicted. Boo! Mr. Nash Skulkin. Eh, go blind, governor. You, what? Oh, I got squeaky there. Is it not the case that when Mr. Graydon just spoke, a thought went through your minds? Would you care to share that thought with the court? Eh, me thoughts? I, I don't have none of them. It must have been him. You what? Mr. Nash Skulkin, answer the question, please. What went through your mind when Mr. Graydon just spoke? Nothing. Honestly, nothing. I, I was just thinking. Exactly, you were thinking. If it weighs on around that much more, it'll open up the wound again, that's all. What wound? And how do you know he has a wound? Ooh. Well, I took the bullet, of course. It was only two days ago. It ain't gonna be healed up yet. So I was, um, well, you know. I was worrying for him, and... Oh, Els Bells! Mr. Graydon, did you hear that? Oh, he got shot in the arm, cause he's holding his arm. This guy has a big mouth. Yeah, they don't seem like the smartest cookies. What? Your combat is worried about you, it seems. On account of your injured arm. My lord. Yes, Mr. Graydon? I have no idea what these two wretches are talking about. Certainly, I shouldn't be expected to answer anything in relation to their mindless insinuations. Hmm. We know that someone other than the victim was hit by a bullet at the scene of the crime two nights ago. And from the head of the bullet hole in the wall, that person was likely hit in the upper arm or thereabouts. I really miss deducing. I wish we could have deduced one more time, but oh well. Perhaps you'd allow a court to a uh, court official to examine your arm, sir? The left arm that you're currently clasping with your right hand, as if in pain. No, I refuse. You have shown no evidence whatsoever that links me to these common thieves. Accordingly, I'm not obliged to permit any such invasion of my privacy. Uh, privacy. Because that's how British people say it. But his coat is white, so eventually, I feel like as the trial goes on, like, blood will seep through it and we'll be like, Yo, you're injured! Mind if we take a look? As I've already said, I'm completely uninvolved in all this. I've never had anything to do with the pawnbrokery where this fellow was killed whatsoever. You took the disc. You got the overcoat. I take offense at the insinuation that I was in any way involved. Hmm. You claim to have nothing whatsoever to do with Mr. Windebank's pawnbrokery. My lord. The defense would like that last statement to be added to Mr. Grayson's formal testimony. Very well, counsel. Continue with your testimony, Mr. Graydon. And then I'm gonna be like, oh, you had nothing to do with it, but you showed up and your name was Mr. Edgar Pettigrew. Yeah, that clearly wasn't me. You were really someone else. My name is Graydon. Why would I have to do it? Why would I pick another name? I'm a respectable gentleman. Um, but yeah. <sighs> Never had anything to do with it? You forget that I was there, Mr. Graydon, on the very afternoon of the incident. Obviously, I'm not a complete stranger to the pawnbrokers. I'm currently on the lookout for an armchair to finish my study. Stop lying. 
No, you were there to redeem an article. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, wasn't... Wasn't someone else there to be like, yeah, I saw him. Do you have something to add, Inspector? Uh, Corporal Gobe Sunshine? You were there too, in fact, weren't you, Inspector? That afternoon. Well, yes, I do remember meeting yourself in the pawnbrokers that afternoon. You, your young Japanese assistant, and the accused were all present as a rock call. And at that time, this witness, Mr. Graydon, was trying to acquire a particular article. Um, well now... I'm afraid I don't remember too clearly. Oh my gosh, thanks a lot! What? But, but you must! I'm not going to lie and pretend I remember something that I don't. I hate you so much right now. What's going on here? Gretzi showed a picture before, didn't he? You know, from the cameras that Hurley installed in Wonderbanks. Yes, of course. Indeed, and the gentleman pictured here bears a striking resemblance to witness, I must say. Exactly, which proves that Mr. Graydon was in the shop on the afternoon in question. At no point have I denied that fact. I am going to strangle you. I merely entered a shop to peruse the articles on sale and have a word with the broker. Uh, if it were gumshoe, we would have let it slip, yeah. Nothing more. He got the coat! This makes no sense. I understand why Mr. Graydon might be trying to cover his tracks. But why would Gregson be trying to avoid giving testimony about what happens? That's all he's going to say on the matter, is it? What do you think, Runo? I think he has no intention of telling us anything. Duh. He's not going to implicate himself. He's well aware that the less he says, the less chance he has of giving himself away. Hmm. The complete opposite of Hurley, then. He seems to think that the more he says, the better. Well, at least I managed to prize a little more information from those witnesses' lips. All thanks to the Skulkin brothers. Yes, they were the key to it after all. So he says he has nothing to do with Windebanks. Well, we know that's not true. Perhaps now would be a good time. So we'll probably look through the court record. Did I miss anything? Good idea, you never know what tiny scrap of information could be a val could become a valuable weapon. Hmm. Uh, shut up, shut up, shut up. Um, let's see. Redemption ticket, but let's see. This says... 13th February, 9 p.m. One small box, 10 shillings. Uh, Mr. Windbank has appeared to have rejected. He's written it very neatly, but still. Perhaps he read out of paper so he has to use anything he had on hand. So, hard to know with the front and the reverse side now. Oh, excuse me, I burped. The cat. Also, 13th February, day after my birthday! Whoa! Uh, Gina's representation papers, blood samples portfolio, but they don't care about blood samples. Um, burpee to a sorry, I'm sorry, it was gross. Date deposited, and this is 15th? Yeah, so this is two days later. 15th of February, one gentleman's overcoat, one pound. Mr. Winterbank, took it. He's written it very neatly, but still, but I don't think I can. I don't know what's sort of her to reverse now. But that says the 15th. Okay, uh, Miss McGilded case notes. I don't think that has anything to do with it right now. Um, this has government secrets, autopsy report, crime scene photograph, floor plan, wooden back slides, Skulkin's gone. Photograph Gina, post shooting photograph, stereoscope, music box this. Um, <laughs> yeah. But that's true, if you hold if you hold it in for too long, then it just hurts your body. That girl's never burp, how dare you burp on stream? 
I'm sorry, I drank too much water. For my gilded. Let me just examine this one more time. Uh, for my gilded. That's the man you defended in court a couple months ago. Mistakenly defended. Name is doing on the back of this disc. Um, so this is blood from someone's fingertip. Well, the deuce, not just someone's fingertip. Mr. Benedict, best drawn to a hole in white. Yes, happened in the afternoon in Windebanks. Gina tried to snatch his disc out of the man's hand. It's cut from the, th the lesson is someone tries to grab a music box this when you let it go quickly. The lesson is don't snatch things, surely. So I don't know if this, because they're not accepting blood as, um, as, uh, whatchamacallit, as evidence. Um, okay, I'm gonna say... Oh shoot, there's like a... There's a mission to do here in this chapter, but I don't know what it is yet. Because there's different achievements you can unlock, and I don't know what it is. I'm just going to display the disc. Hopefully it's... Oh, the music stopped, I'm right. <laughs> Have you ever seen this disc before, Mr. Graydon? Why? Is it supposed to mean something? This disc was, until the day of his murder, in pawn in Mr. Windebank's shop. It was redeemed by the defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade, that afternoon. However, somebody mysteriously appeared to try to take it from her. And that somebody was you, of course, wasn't it, Mr. Graydon? As I have re reiterated numerous times now, you are mistaken. That was not me. I've never seen that disc before in my life. It may have escaped your notice, but there is a small smear of blood on the disc. Oh yes, resulting from an abrasion of the thumb, perhaps. That's right. The surface of the disc is covered in hundreds of tiny little bumps. In the skirmish to acquire the disc, the thumb of the person who tried to take it suffered minor lacerations. Hmm. So, while the disc bears the remnants of that skirmish in the forms, in the form of this smear of the blood, I can't read, I'm tired. The thumb of the person in question must bear the remnants also, in the form of a scratch. Good gracious, indeed it must. Mr. Graydon. You refuse to allow a court officer to examine your arm before. Are you now going to refuse to allow us to examine your thumb? Because I have no doubt that it bears a small scratch consistent with the smear of blood on this disc. Scratch, bro, I can only destroy. <laughs> hey, Salk, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. Hope you've been well, dude. Well, well. It would seem I underestimated you. What, what is the meaning of this? So you admit it now. You admit you have a scratch on your thumb from when you attempted to take the disc from the defendant. I never said that. I only said I underestimated you. Order! Well, Mr. Graydon? It would appear there has been something of a misunderstanding here. I've been very well, I made questionable art. Ooh, like, what? <laughs> I did not attempt to take the disc, as you put it. No, quite the reverse. What are you trying to say? It's really quite simple, you see. The disc was mine from the offset. Is there some crime in taking an item you and out of pawn? But you said you had no other business there, you idiot! Oh my gosh, what? It would seem, Mr. Graydon, that in this piece of evidence, my learned friend has established a link between yourself and the incident. One of my pieces called Women Love Me. Eh, eh, no! Oh, so why? Why, no? <laughs> that kind of questionable. Is it because of that that screenshot of um Su Su I don't remember his name from Code Kies like this fish this fish will pleasure me. <laughs> Accordingly, you will tell the court everything you know about this disc now. 
As you wish. That one quite sure has nothing whatsoever to do with the pawnbroker's murder. No, I've gained an unfortunate title. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I hope fish don't pleasure you in that way. <laughs> There's a note under the saying for McGilded, but the item belongs to me. The redemption ticket was stolen from me by the accused, that filthy guddling, on the day in question. She didn't get that over- what? I proceeded at once to the shop in order to explain my situation and redeem my article- Oh, because he's saying that she stole the ticket from him. That's what he's been saying from the get-go. In the end, of course, the disc was taken by the police. In other words, I had absolutely no reason to break into the shop later that same night. You did because you said, where's the other one? And Windbanks is like, this is the only ticket for that article, so... <laughs> did I hear you correctly, sir? Oops, it's McGilded, you say? The famous London philanthropist. Who perished in this very courtroom two months ago after being acquitted of a distinctly messy murder. Yes, my lord. They were in the same. Good lord! Mr. Graydon! Are you saying that Mr. McGilded and yourself were acquainted? Yes, that's correct. Whoops, why did I give him a weird accent? Alter! Well, I certainly didn't expect to hear that name uttered here in my courtroom again. According to what Gina told us, this disc was placed in pawn on that fateful night two months ago. McGilded himself gave instructions to deposit it at Windbanks. It's funny that Mr. Graydon here is claiming that this belongs to him then, isn't it? In all likelihood, he's lying. So he appeared that afternoon at Windbanks in order to get his hands on McGilded's disc for some reason. Counsel, you will commence your cross-examination, please. Would you care to explain how this belongs to you? Kitty toes, right? White cats. As you will observe, a communications officer such as myself come out a fine salary. You are certainly exquisitely dressed, sir. So you see, I have little need to make use of the services provided by the pawnbroker trade. But you... You say you have fine clothes, but then you pick up an old overcoat that clearly didn't fit you. Like, you're- you're such a liar. However, I did once find myself in difficulties having misplaced my purse whilst on an errand. Which is why I pawned my fine black overcoat to the broker in question. You claimed that was your overcoats? But it ripped! Why, you always lie! <laughs> Stop your effort lying. Obviously, and in my haste, I clean forgot that the music box disc was in its pockets. And yet there is a note on it that reads for McGilded. And if you dropped it off a month ago, but McGilded was two months ago that he died, so what? I am a collector of rare and unusual music box music. I first met Mr. McGilded at a gentleman's club in the city, and I was interested to discover that he shared my pension in that area. So the disc in question... It's a pre-production sample. I promised to let Mr. McGilded hear it. But then you forgot that it was in the pocket of the overcoat you were forced to pawn. Yes, exactly. Gina didn't mention any of that in her testimony two months ago, did she? No, because Miss McGilded had threatened her to keep her mouth shut. Which means that if we dig too deeply here, it's going to expose Gina's perjury. Oh dear, this is complicated, isn't it? What's all this about a gentleman's club? Uh, that's what, um... Uh, London men 
all did like on a couple of days a week they'd go to their um club lunch club or um some kind of like social gathering and they just hang out with their friends and drink and just talk about stuff but they called it a club yep maybe that's why gentlemen's club have that name now because it was legit only for gentlemen and i think for some of them you have to be some kind of at least some kind of social standing in order to be allowed entry or like membership into the club hmm. let's leave it alone for the time being Perjury in Ace Attorney? No way! <laughs> Mesh in a club with all the Asogis. <sighs> yes! The best club. <laughs> so you're saying that Miss Lestrade lifted the ticket from your pocket or bag? That's right. Despite being mindful of danger when walking in the insalubrious areas, her kind frequent. Yeah. Jelly streams. Heck yeah, they are. Miss Lestrade did no such thing. Well, of course you would take that stance, but the girl is a regular offender. You came to the pawnbrokery that day prepared with all the information you needed to identify the defendants. You were looking for her. That's what brought you to Windebanks. To get your hands on Mr. McGillard's disc. My learned friend is a veritable font of nonsense. Nonsense? I concur with the prosecution. Counsel, you will refrain from conjecturing in this way. Is that clear? Yes, my lord. Then I will continue with my testimony for what possible use it can be. Had you ever been to Windebanks before? Only once for the purposes of pawning something, but like many, I enjoy browsing such establishments. So when you notice that the pickpocket had taken your ticket, you chased after her. Is that correct? Asogis, should I ask? Um, he's the character. <clears throat> he's the friend with the bandana that's always uh, floating. That died in the second case. I miss him. He was so good looking. He was so awesome. <laughs> Jelly Dream Man. Yeah, part of my dream man. <laughs> One of like 10 dream men, exactly. <laughs> yes, that's right. I didn't notice at first, of course, such as the art of the pick purse. But when I did, I headed to the poem brokery at once in order to reclaim my coat before the thief could. I was merely trying to recover what was rightfully mine in the first place. There's gonna be some kind of like weird, crazy, convoluted, like way we have to be like why did you want this in the first place and it's gonna be so annoying to drag out of him uh he can say what he likes because he knows we have no evidence to contradict him on this in the end of course this was taken by the police yes it was taken by inspector gregson here wasn't it that's right this was the very man Apparently, the police are collecting anything that has a connection to Mr. Begilded as evidence. Oh, whoa. Are people not supposed to know that? Is something wrong, Inspector? Um, well, um, what do you mean? The last remark Mr. Graydon made in his testimony seemed to trouble you in some way. Uh, no, no, it didn't. It's nothing. Leave it alone. Let me ask you this, Inspector. Why is Scotland Yard gathering Mr. McGillard's possessions? I can't tell you something like that, Sunshine! What is it, Inspector? Investigative secrets! Yes, exactly. You should know it all about, all about that. Man, Mr. McGilded, who died so unexpectedly after his trial two months ago. A man renowned throughout the capital for his great contributions to public life, yet he had a dark side too. That's not surprising, you know, I don't know why you're shocked. Where are you going with this, Nazis? 
I suppose the police are dealing with the aftermath of his nefarious activities, are they? That's enough. Couples like we have duties to carry out that we're not at liberty to talk about. That's all you need to know. Duties conferred by Lord Strongheart, I presume. The Lord Chief Justice appears to have great faith in you, Inspector. The bottom line is, if you want to get more out of me, you go and need Lord Strongheart's portrait first. What's all this about? It's like there's something going on between Gregson and Lord Van Zeeks here. Well, it would appear that the inspector has revealed all he has at liberty to reveal. Mr. Graydon, let us return to your testimony. Gladly, my lord. In other words, I had absolutely no reason to burp, 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 burp out. You did! You said there was another piece! But perhaps you've seen something of value among the forfeited items. No, not at all. Make me down! Pew! <laughs> oh. A valuer was brought in by the police to assess everything in the shop. Without exception, every article on the shelves was common or garden bric-a-brac. In that case, it's clear that you broke into the shop later that day in order to recover Mr. McGilda's disc. I'm almost able to hydrate. No! <laughs> I remember the hydrate parties. Oh gosh, that was too much. Have you, been listen Have you not been listening, man? Even if I wanted to recover the disc. You may recall that I had been seized by the police that afternoon. Oops, my fault. Yeah, Kirby. You were one of the perpetrators. Thanks for the hugs. <laughs> There's no more on the shot that night than I, and I keep saying I simply had no reason to break in. But how do I prove that there was a second disc, though? That there was nothing of Mr. McGill that's left in the shop that night. Nothing this man might have been after. I wonder if that's really true. No, because there's two items. Rina, if you have some evidence, then let him have it. I'm dying to see that irritatingly assured expression of his crumble. Magilda slipped the disc into his coat pocket and had it deposited at Windebanks. Then, when he realized he was going to be arrested on suspicion of the omnibus murder, he threatened Gina and forced her to take the redemption ticket. There's no doubt about it. That witness is lying through his pearly white teeth. The police were obviously after anything left behind by McGilded as well. That's why Inspector Gregson ended up taking the disc into custody that day. But Gregson's being very strange about all this. There must be a reason for that, I'm sure. I just don't know what it is. For now, I need to focus on exposing the fact that Mr. Graydon is lying in his testimony. Is it gonna be that it's the... Okay. So you know how we have two tickets? Pawnbroker's tickets, box, and then pawnbroker's ticket, coat. I think, where did we find this one? And did we even present this one? Because... Because Gina had the one for the coat, and the, was the disc inside the coat? Like... Are people mixing up that these are the same tickets? Because it's the cat um, photograph that's like very similar, but like slightly different. But then the dates on these, this is 13th and this is 15th. So... Maybe, maybe it is that Gina had her ticket Benedict had his own ticket, but then he thought that Gina stole his ticket because they looked so similar. But then where did I get the first ticket? I don't remember any anything. <laughs> wow. Um, um, oh, no, no, I didn't mean to skip it. No, I'm sorry. 
because the one that um, Magilda put into his pocket has to be has to be the one dated 15th February because um, that's the one that has Mason's blood on it from the omnibus murder and um, the murder happened two days ago I thought for some reason I thought that the um, recovery period was only one month but it's two months and today's the 17th of April which means blah, blah, blah. so um, okay I'm gonna save I don't know why I'm saving, because they're very lenient with the lives, but I, I just feel safer saving. Um, I'm going to present... this? <gasps> I'm right! The music stopped! This disc was deposited at Windbanks on Magnum... I can read. This disc was deposited at Windbanks on Magnus McGilda's instructions. You knew that, and you went there with the intention of... A, a, Obtaining it for yourself. Conjecture again, and in any case, the disc was taken into custody by the police that afternoon. The witness had no reason to visit the pawnbrokery again that night. Paranoid. <laughs> am I paranoid? I guess I am if I keep like saving before big decisions. Sorry, my learned friend, but that's not true. What? Mr. McGilded had another article in pawn at Windbanks. As this second pawnbroker's ticket proves. Ah! There were two articles belonging to Mr. McGilded in the Windbanks pawnbrokery. And the reason you broke into the shop that night was to recover the second one. Together with your two accomplices, the Skulkin brothers. Ah! Hmm. This is the second ticket, is it? What had the man deposited? The article description reads, One small box. A rather vague description, it seems to me. Are you suggesting that I broke into the pawnbroker with these clowns in order to steal some trinket box? I believe there are adequate grounds to suspect that you did. This is absurd. Why on earth would I do such a thing? Once the article had been forfeited, I could simply walk into the shop and purchase it. There would be absolutely no need for me to resort to theft. That's a good point. Hmm, indeed, the witness makes a solid argument. So that means that for some reason, this Graydon fellow needed the small box that very night, does it? It's time to put an end to this nonsense, my lord. Could you be a little less cryptic, Lord Van Zeeks? I do hate to ruin my learned friend's argument, but the truth is quite incontrovertible. On the night in question, no small box was taken from Windebank's pawnbrokery. And rest assured, the prosecution can prove it. What? Good gracious! Inspector, show the photographic prints to the court, if you please. Yes, sir. What prints? These prints were taken from one of the defect, uh, detective security cameras. Ah, here these red-handed recorders again. As previously explained, using this plan on the shop layout. The victim's establishment was furnished with automatic cameras in two locations. One was set to capture the counter where Mr. Windebank received his customers. And the other was set to capture the shelves on which articles were placed for sale once forfeited. According to the information on this ticket, the Gilda small box had been forfeited already. Two days before the incident, at 9 pm on 13th April, to be precise. Wasn't Sholmes looking at collecting music boxes too? I think he was. Which means it would have had to be on the shelves for forfeited items in the shop front. Now, what I have here is a print taken by one of the cameras about two hours before the incident. You're right! 
Sholmes was thinking about collecting music boxes from all over Europe. So, you may be right, Smooth. That's 11 p.m. on 15th April. Hmm, the victim certainly had a very full shop, it would appear. And then here we have another prince. This one was taken about two hours after the incident. I see, so we have two pictures to compare. Use the stereo scoop. Though I must say that placing them side by side leaves me cold. Dear me, that's starting to make my headache. Obviously, at Scotland Yard, we considered theft as one possible motive in this case. We explored the possibility that something had been taken in addition to the victim's life. So you men have already compared these two prints thoroughly, Inspector. Yes, sir. We counted every single item in each of these two photographic prints. And the Yard's conclusion is that exactly the same number are present in both. Hmm. In other words, nothing was taken from the pawn brokery on the night in question. And my learned friend's assertion is nothing more than a hopeful fantasy. I am going to punch your face so hard, dude. Wait till you lose. I don't believe it. If I could have just shown that he'd stolen McGillis' pond box... I might have been able to break him down at last. You know what, Bruno? I've been thinking. I wonder if these two photographs really are exactly the same. What? So, Council, whoops, my foot is really close to my computer's power button, I should move it away. Uh, in light of the evidence put forward by the prosecution, what is your position? It seems that in fact, on the night in question, nothing was stolen from the victim's establishment. Do you accept the prosecution's assertion? Fuzzy toes. <laughs> doggy? What doggy? Doggy where? I don't know. Could there be some hidden discrepancy in these two photographic prints somewhere? Use a piece of evidence to find out. Before I give my answer, my lord, I'd like to try something if I may. Try something? What do you mean, counsel? I'll need to use a certain piece of evidence from the court record to identify the discrepancy. You can't object to that. I'm not entirely sure I follow- Oh my gosh, how do you not follow? There are two photographic prints, oh my gosh! Which piece of evidence do you need to use? Blah, blah, blah. I don't know, I wonder which one could help me distinguish between two different pictures. I'd like to use this device, my lord. To view the two prints stereoscopically. Ooh! Yes, you caught the bug at last! You can't resist it, can you? You've got the cross-side compulsion. Juror number three. What a surprise. Come on, Renault. Let's put the pictures in place and see what this wonderful contraption shows us. Did you know this game was on the 3DS? Yep. <laughs> there we go. Now look through the eyepiece. Whoa, a box! I wasn't sure at first, but... There's a clear discrepancy between these two prints. What? A loser. <laughs> you must identify the location in question for the court counsel. <laughs> Indicate the precise location of the discrepancy in which you speak. I don't know, can it be this only highlighted thing? <laughs> Granted, these two prints are almost identical. However, there is one minor discrepancy between them. What? When 
you view the two pictures stereoscopically? A single area stands out as being different. The location of this small box. Let's be wait. Uh, unbelievable. By Jove, you're right. How extraordinary. What this tells us is very simple. Mr. McGillard's small box was indeed not stolen from Windbanks on the night in question. However, there can be no doubt that somebody picked up this particular box and then returned it to its place on the shelves. Are you suggesting that the small box originally deposited by Mr. Gilbert is, in fact... Yes, the very same small box I just identified in those photographic prints. Mindless guesswork. What if it was? We got him. I... But... But look, he's... So a box was moved on the shelf. Nothing was stolen. Boxes open and have stuff in it, you dumb idiot! Which means quite simply that nothing has changed. That may be true, but... Alright, McGilden's box wasn't stolen then. But doesn't the fact that it was moved like that change things? It changes everything! I was gonna steal you, girl! But I didn't have a need to. <laughs> Sorry, I had this, like, piece of skin hanging off that I need to get out. Okay, done. I believe this changes everything about the case. How can that possibly be? The crucial point is the fact that, w uh, that what was moved was a small box. In other words, we have to consider what might have been inside that box. What are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that we need to examine that box as soon as possible. A vital piece of evidence is sitting on the shelves at Windbanks as you speak. That won't be necessary. Some little box belonging to a man who died two months ago can't possibly be relevant to this trial, can you? Mother flippin', I am going to slap your face. It doesn't matter anyway, the police is gonna have to pick that box up because it's related to McGilded and they're investigating him, so shut your trap. The court does not uphold your objection, Lord Van Zeeks. Bailiff, arrange for an officer to go to Baker Street at once. Obtain the small box in question and bring it back here for further examination. Man, you need to, like, get some sunlight, you need to eat some food, you need to exercise, your skin is looking so... gross. We should have a report within half an hour. I think perhaps we should recess for a short while until the evidence is brought forth. To be hoodwinked by such a farce. <laughs> Disappointing. Then get out of here. I beg your pardon, Lord Van Zeeks. This is nothing but a smokescreen. A Nipponi special. Wow. So freaking racist. What are you trying to say? My learned friend has persisted with the same line of reasoning from the very beginning. That this witness's intent was to steal an article belonging to Mr. McGilded from the pawnbrokery. Yet common sense tells us that none of the articles have value enough to be worth stealing in the first place. Exactly! It would be beyond absurd to break into a place for the purpose of stealing such a commonplace property. Yet you made such a big fuss about taking the overcoat and the disc, so... Hmm... Hmm... 
Man, look at this white man privilege complaining about every little thing he possibly can. Wow. If your lordship recalls, Mr. McGilded perished two months ago, immediately after the conclusion of his trial. A trial in which he was found not guilty. A trial in which it was established he was the upstanding member of society, his reputation implied, in fact. And now you're just being salty that you lost. So I propose a toast to my learned friend and his most insightful defense. The articles this upstanding member of society pawned were entirely ordinary. A black overcoat that just happened to have a music box disc in one of its pockets, and a small box. I assure you, I wouldn't accept even the... Uh, I wouldn't accept even if the man tried to make a gift of such things to me. Yet you made a whole fuss about getting the overcoat and the disc back. Except there's no way for me to prove it, which is so infuriating. You know, the disc make rather a lot of sense. It's not as if it was gold or jewels, as if the goodness knows McGilda was rich enough. But you can't deposit cash at a pawn program, I'm quite certain of that. The prosecution's argument is undeniably compelling. It is incumbent on the defense now to bolster its argument. I am going to crush your throat. <laughs> to explain what possible significance these commonplace articles pawned by this fine citizen could have. You were the one who was like, McGilded is a piece of garbage and he needs to be put in jail. And now, oh, he's just rubbing it in our face like, oh, what could this fine upstanding member of society have to do with this doesn't relate to the minutes at all? I'm going to slap his face. Well, counsel, is your argument in fact demonstrable? Are you able to show proof that the disc or the box are in any tangible way related to the case? Because that take it that had the coat has Mason's blood on it. Duh. What's the matter, Rudo? We know that they're related, don't we? They're both vital pieces of evidence. Yes, of course. You and I both know that. We know McGilded's true character, and we know the disc is significant, even if we don't know why. But if we explain all that to the court at this point. We'll have to acknowledge that Miss McGilda's acquittal two months ago was a mistake. So? That the defense argument was flawed, based on false information. But that's not your fault. You were not given all the in information. Oh no. And that would mean... Admitting that Gina committed perjury. Who cares? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't care. But Ginny... Could it be that Van Zeke's knows? Is that why he's doing this now? Because he anticipated everything. But maybe. This could be a great opportunity for us. Sorry? What do you mean, Iris? Well, what is it that you always say, Rudo? Sooner or later, the truth comes out. Every time. All right, the exact significance of the things that McGilda deposited with Mr. Windebank is something that only Gina can explain to the court. Perjury or murder charges. Mm. Exactly! I'd rather have perjury! I'm... But if I put her on the stand to testify about that, it could critically damage our chances of winning this case. Or... Just show the ticket with Mace 08, but they won't accept blood. They don't accept the blood samples thing as evidence, so I can't do that. That's why we're doing this. Oh, this is so... Have to... Whatever. Have to testify. My lord, the defense would like to make a proposal. Oh? What proposal, counsel? While the court awaits the arrival of Mr. McGill's small box, I would like to call the defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade, to the witness stand. The defendant? To what end? It's to do with the various articles deposited at Mr. Winterbanks by Mc Mr. McGilden, my lord. Miss Lestrade has information re relating to them. 
I believe it would be beneficial for the court to hear what she has to say. It will prove the significance of the articles in question once and for all. Well, well, things are becoming interesting. I presume you've considered the implications of the testimony you're proposing. In particular, the impact it will have on the accused's standing, and indeed your own. What does it have to do with me? I... Oh my gosh, it's not like I was defending her. And it's not my fault that she lied. Like, what? I have. That's what he want, yep. Lord Van Zeex, would you care to explain that last remark? The prosecution accepts the defense's proposal. I move to interrupt the cross-examination of the current witness and hear from the accused herself. Very well, if you have no objection. So, the court will now hear the testimony of the defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade. You witnesses currently in the stand may step down until further notice. You're not leaving before tea time. And you don't have your hat. Then I shall bid you a good day. You're not leaving. You still have to stay here. Wait. You, sir, shall remain in the stand while Miss Lestrade testifies. As you wish. All right then, Gita. It's time. I know this will be hard, but please put your faith in me here. <clears throat> Good luck, Reno. I said good day. <laughs> the articles that Mr. McGilder had deposited in Winnebank's pawnbrokery are intimately related with the omnibus case, the trial of which was heard in this courtroom two months ago. Yes, and I remember this young lady being brought before me in that trial as well. That's right, my lord. Her testimony helped to establish the innocence of the defendant, Mr. McGilded. The omnibus case was intriguing, to say the least. And now here we are all again. The same players in that trial facing each other once more. A twist of fate, perhaps, my Nipponese friend. I'm not your friend. Don't call me friend. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What was that? Allow me to recap the events of two months ago. Sorry, I pressed my button too quickly. An old brickmaker was stabbed to death in an omnibus running along London's winter streets. Apart from the victim, there was only one other person in the carriage, Mr. McGilded. Naturally, he was the prime suspect for the murder. But as the trial progressed, another possibility emerged. That the murder, in fact, took place above the defendant's head on the roof deck. With the body then being dropped through the skylight into the carriage below. It was Miss Lestrade whose testimony brought that possibility to light. At the time of the incident, Miss Lestrade was concealed under the seat in the carriage, hoping to pick, po pick the pockets of unsuspecting passengers. All this wouldn't happen if you didn't eat the old man's chicken. The chicken? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that was way long ago. Also, hey, dear, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. Or try to sell the pendant. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, too, too much at play here. It's like, oh, all of these coincidentally just bloop. Uh, no, after trial, drink jelly. <laughs> it's okay, I don't drink anyway. Then, immediately after the trial, having be being acquitted of the murder, Mr. McGill died in this very courtroom in the most extraordinary of circumstances. A mystery that remains unsolved even now, two months on. Imagine how Asugi Thirsty Jelly would be if she was drunk. 
I've never been drunk before. I've only ever been tipsy, and I didn't like it. So I don't, I don't want to be drunk. No, thank you. As indeed does the omnibus murder itself. I don't think I'd want to know exactly. Yeah, like when I used to work at a Korean company, everyone was like, "Dude, you need to experience getting blackout drunk and not remembering how you got home." Like, I would wake up on a random street. And I didn't know how I got there. And I'm like, that's great for you guys, but I am a woman and I don't want to be, you know, not aware of of where I am and who's around me and how I get home. But they're like, no, you have to experience that once in your life or else you're not really living. You know, you do all the crazy stuff when you're young. And I'm like, yeah, that's how you also get possibly raped and killed. Hmm. Be that as a bay. Boomer? Am I a boomer? No, I'm not that old. <laughs> I recall neither the disc nor the small box being mentioned in the course of those proceedings. Miss Lestrade. Granny Hi, Grandma. I'm not a grandma! I mean, I feel like a grandma because my joints, but... Burping would be the last on the list. What? <laughs> would you tell the court now, please? What really happened in the omnibus two months ago, I mean. And this is why we have Susato's nose on the omnibus. I don't know what you mean. I already said all of what I know. And what about everything you told us yesterday from inside your prison cell? Please, Miss Lestrade, this is extremely important. But... Remember, little girl. Oh, if I got drunk? <laughs> Burping would be the last on the list. <laughs> if it transpires that you willfully withheld information in the trial two months ago, the Home Office will seek to prosecute you for perjury. Perjury murder, perjury murder. Hmm. <laughs> and naturally, you will lose all credibility as a witness. Although, let's face facts. You have little credibility to lose. Ginny, don't listen to him. Please, you have to trust Runo now. Uh, Iris. We're on your side. All right then. I'll talk. It's the right choice, Gina. Well, it would seem that my learned friend is hellbent on bringing the entire courtroom down on his about his ears. So be it. Don't act like you're not happy about this. Shut your stupid face. I'm on. I'm four chapter away to finish Fatal Frame Five, and no one knows how short it was when I played it on a Wii U years ago. Damn, you're already that far. How are you liking it? However, it would appear that Mr. McGillis pawned articles in that extraordinary case of the omnibus. Harbor secrets of which we have been hitherto unaware. Getting S plus on all chapters is going to be a pain. Oh man, good luck with that. <laughs> so, Mr. Strahd, you will now give your testimony before the court about the events of two months ago. I played it on and off too. Oh. You reveal the truth, a commodity sorely lacking in your original statements. This is it then. Everything's going to come out. That's what she said. Like Van Zeek said. This could bring the whole courtroom down about my ears, but as a lawyer, I'm prepared to take that risk. I was thinking about getting Fatal Frame 5 just because it's like so pretty. But then I think about the story and like the um the gameplay and I'm just like it's it's very pretty but it's like kind of confusing and honestly Fatal Frame 1 story is the most solid and best so I'm just like eh. yeah the, the story of Fatal Frame 4 and 5 I'm just like what is going on it's scary but like what is going on a band may try to talk me into getting drunk just once and um, he said but I want to stay in control of what I do exactly like, it's uh, it's scary not knowing how you're going to react or, like, 
where are you gonna go and ugh, it's just not fun not for me I like two of them yeah Fatal Frame 2 also had a really good story Fatal Frame 3 was just like kind of middling it was I feel like it was only really good because you got to revisit um, 1 and 2 again but after that like the the curses the rituals like they didn't feel as um as um what's the word as necessary or heavy as the first two because Fatal Frame 4 it's just like oh you have to do this dance or else your face gets blurry and that's it and I'm like that that's the curse that's the ritual that's not that scary and the Fatal Frame 5 is oh if you're sad and you're ready to die then tell the tell these priestesses all your thoughts and stuff and then you can be buried in the water or like or like something and I'm like that also isn't what but like fail frame one and two it's like hey you gotta guard the gates of hell or else your whole village is gonna be destroyed and it's like well that's pressing that is dire yeah uh whoops i have to read the testimony truth is that brick mega cove was in the cabin on the omnibus the whole time when the irishman dragged me out from under the seat i saw that disc on the floor all of a sudden, I heard a scream from over me in, and that pair on the roof deck went off to call the club. Stop, slops. That's when Matilda slipped the driver some tin to do a run to the pawn shop roundabout. He threatened me not to snitch, not to say nothing to no one about what I see or heard. How about Arise? I stopped playing after I beat the first boss. Boss fight is so uh, good, so fun. You might have a bit of a hard time. I didn't even get Arise yet. Yeah, I'm really, um, I'm really waiting to, um, get a PS5 Pro or Slim, whichever comes first, whenever it comes, like three years, four years, before I get a rise. I haven't even started it. I still have to finish Dragon Quest, man. <laughs> I still have to finish Dragon Quest and Persona 5 Strikers. I'm st I'm, I've just been playing Great Ace Attorney this whole time. I really want to play a rise, though. I want to play another Tales game. Good grief, this is outrageous. What you just told the court bears almost no resemblance to your testimony two months ago. As you say, my lord. Time for Berseria. Haha. <laughs> then, then there's every chance. I may have adjudicated an error in Magilda's trial. It sounds very much to me as if the man deliberately deceived his court. In an effort to cover up the most wicked of schemes. Without doubt, your lordship is correct. A great injustice was done in this courtroom two months ago. The actions of the accused in that trial, of this witness, and of my learned friend, are entirely- I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't know McGilded did all this. I just went based off the information given to me. I did not willfully defend McGilded and skew the facts. I just went, oh my gosh. And the jury agreed too anyway, so it's not my fault. I'm going to slap your face. I don't believe it. The whole trial was a farce. It was all lies. That McGilded fellow was rotten to the core, just like that pickpocket. Don't forget that lawyer from the East. They were all in on it together. Oh, racist. At least you're going to get old and retire. You have a lot of games to keep your mind busy. Exactly. Ace Attorney World, where the defense attorney gets all the blame. Yeah, fun times. You're wrong. The lot of you. Mr. Nara Odo, the lawyer there, he didn't know nothing about it. Humbug. I don't think so. Are we really expected to believe that? What? What possible reason could you have for not believing me? He really stitched everyone up, didn't he? What an operation to get the man off scot-free. Unforgivable. Stop. The lies have to stop. Stop. How long is this game? Are you close to finishing yet? I'm... I think I'm about halfway through case five. And so that's the end of the first great ace attorney. And then there's a second great ace attorney, which has another five cases. So I'm not even halfway close to done. <laughs> Just watch your blood pressure. <laughs> I'm starting to get a headache, actually. Yes, the defense made a terrible error of judgment, but we didn't really. I intend to take full responsibility and suffer whatever consequences are deemed appropriate. However, it is imperative that the court allows the witness to elaborate on her testimony. Because the true significance of McGillard's pawned articles must be brought to light. No objections here? 
Very well, my learned student friend. Given the depths of calamity you have just plunged yourself into, this may very well be worth hearing. I think this is the longest game you, you stream. Really? The longest? Thank you for the hugs, Kirby. Um, hmm. Now I think the longest might be Persona 5. Words fail me. The situation is utterly deplorable. Mr. Nalhudo. Yes, my lord. I will decide upon your fate following the conclusion of this trial. Why are they thinking that I'm implicit in this? Like, I just went off the big. I just went based off the information that McGilda and Gina told me, and then I was like, well, it's possible that this happened. Like, it's. It's up to the jury to decide, you mother flipping doughbags. Of course, my lord. Blimey, Mr. Naruto. Persona didn't feel long. <laughs> Now, counsel, proceed with your cross-examination. Yeah, because, um, I think... Let's see. Well, I don't know how long Persona was because I used to have, um, shorter stream times. And when I first played Persona, I think I only did, like, half hour or, like, 45 minutes. So I can't tell because this is actually two hours. I don't know. Because you rarely stream now, so it made it feel a lot. Yeah, if I stream three days a week, again, I feel like I would get through games faster, but... I want to draw more, so I cut down streaming time. And actually, I'm getting a really big headache. Um, I've had a headache since earlier in the day, but like, ugh, I'm dying now. I really want to get through this last um, testimony because I feel like there's another checkpoint, but I just, I have to tap out now. I need to, um, whoops, I need to take my headphones off. I need to rest my eyes for a bit and then immediately play some more Animal Crossing. But yeah, um, get better grandma, no! <laughs> I mean, I will try to get better. Um, by Thursday, hopefully my headache is gone. But yeah, I'll pick up from right here on Thursday and then we'll just try to go as much as we can and hopefully I'll finish it soon. So yeah, that's it for me tonight. Sorry, I'm ending up like a tad bit earlier, but I can't, I can't take it anymore. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.